Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jessie and this week we're doing another reading vlog because I'm in the mood to read some more. And I will be kicking it off with The Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. I don't want to tell you the theme for this reading vlog until I can figure out the best way to describe it. Um, so hopefully sometime in the next few clips you'll know the name of this theme or at least you'll know in the title. But at this point in time I can't figure out the best word for it because it's not spooky or anything. So um, yeah, um, I'm about to start reading this book while Rowan's napping. I just took a few Instagram pictures. So I'm going to try to read while Rowan naps. And then um, I think in this vlog, I'm going to try to do a little bit better at showing you guys, I guess, like daily life a little bit. It's just even before um, the pandemic happened, we're all homebodies. So um, just try to figure out ways to like make the vlogs a little more interesting. But I'm gonna go read this book and I will catch up with you guys later and let you know how it's going. Hey guys, um, I'm making this one pot pasta. Yeah, making that one pot pasta uh, for dinner. And I read about almost to halfway through A Monster Calls. It's a pretty quick read because I think it's supposed to be like a, like a middle grade book. And it's really, I really like it so far. Um, it's really interesting reading about all of Connor's emotions. Especially because I can't remember feeling like this whenever I was around his age, maybe a little bit younger because my mom also had cancer whenever I was a kid. And so it's really interesting kind of rereading that experience as an adult woman reading about how like a young teenage boy felt at that time. But yeah, I'm actually about to cook dinner. I thought I'd try to show y'all what I was doing as I cooked it. I'm really enjoying Monster Call so far and I'll keep updating you guys. I really think there's a good chance I can finish it tonight because I'm able to read it so quickly. It was just dinner time. So I had to stop and cook dinner. So yeah. Hey guys, um, my background's a little messy. We just got back from eating groceries not too long ago and I had to put Rowan down for a nap. So sorry if you can see like, or you definitely can see the groceries on the table, the warm groceries um, on the table in the background. And then Rowan's like part of his high chairs, like still by the sink from breakfast. We've had a little bit of a busy morning, but we went and got groceries. And I finished A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness last night. And I need to take some time to think about it because it kind of hit me kind of hard. Um, I definitely cried. I cried a little good bit at the end. Uh, right, so like I was saying, I cried a good bit at the end. And I said either sometime in this video um, or sometime in my last video or um, maybe both that my mom actually died of cancer whenever I was about 12. So in some ways, I kind of related to how Connor was feeling in this book, like the emotions he felt. Um, like, you know, like being guilty for not always 100% believing that your mom would die or that your mom would live. Um, and like always having that, that thought in the back of your mind, like, you know, what if the treatments don't work? And so it made me kind of emotional whenever I read it. But I really did love this book. It was, ooh, Wilson, please don't do that. It was five stars for me. Um, it's a five star rating for me and I wish it was something that it was, I think, from what I could tell, it seems like it was published in around 2011. And so it's something I wish I would have read whenever I was in, um, I would have been in eighth or ninth grade, depending on the time of year it was published. And so I kind of wish I would have read it then. 
And I wonder if it would have hit me harder or differently, which I still cried. I still really love this book. But I can kind of see where they're coming from, especially the grandmother. Because my sister and I actually ended up moving in with our grandmother a couple months after our mom died. And so me and my sister were super sheltered by everything that was happening until the last minute. And kind of the way that um, Connor's parents seemed to mostly be trying to keep him. But the grandmother is really pushing for them to let Connor know what's happening because things aren't looking good. And... And Connor knows in the back of his mind that things aren't looking good, but he doesn't want to admit it because, you know, why would you want to admit that you think your mom's not going to make it? And then um, he starts having this dream, or it may or may not be a dream, and about this monster um, who comes to visit him. And Connor's just going through a lot emotionally because he's, I guess he's embarrassed that his mom's sick, or it's not necessarily that he's embarrassed, but he doesn't want people to pity him for it, kind of, and so he's pretty isolated at school because of the person who used to be his best friend, he's not friends with anymore, and so he's going through, like, a little bit of bull bullying, but then, like, even his bully's like, you know what, I'm gonna leave you alone, and there's just a lot going on for Connor, he's, there's a lot going home on at home, there's a lot going on at school, and he feels isolated everywhere because, it's just him and his mom at home and then she's starting to feel bad so his grandmother comes and then his mom ends up in the hospital because she's pretty sick and so he ends up at his grandmother's house and the monster comes to him he tells him stories and the stories always have these messages like you know not everyone's good and bad you need to hold your beliefs and like also about like being that it's not always sometimes being invisible isn't that bad. And so the monster kind of helps him realize the truth of how Connor feels and everything and like admit to himself. And so I really enjoyed this book. I really, I, I really, really enjoyed this book. And um, I will be starting my next read probably in a few hours. I'm going to finish putting up groceries, clean some dishes, and then I have a video that's supposed to go up in a couple of days. So I need to get it edited um, if I want to get back on track because I liked being on track up until June and July, so I'm gonna get back that way. But anyways, I will catch up with you guys next time I start reading. It's the next day. I didn't get to read until about 10 last night and by then it was late enough that I was only able to read about 50 or 60 pages before I got tired and had to stop reading for the night. But just reading this book, again, I still love this book so much. This is still a favorite. I still love the way it's told. I love how it starts with death kind of talking about like what he does exactly. I love how he talks about how he tries to avoid looking at people because the dead people, eh, they're just kind of there, but the people who are left, like, if we were left alive, it kind of sucks to see them and how they're taking things. And then he starts by talking about how Lizelle, the book thief, he starts talking about how, like, you know, the three main times he's seen her. And then that happened, he, like, kind of quickly outlines those parts, and then you see kind of the first time it happened where after her brother died on the way to a foster family, and then you kind of see her first few weeks or months with the foster family to where you know she kind of struggles at first because why would her mom leave her if her mom loves her and stuff and so you see like her relationship with Rose Rosa Rosa is kind of just she's Rosa like if you've read this book you'll know what I'm talking about but she's very she's foul but she's like lovable like she's incredibly rude but also you want to like her because she's doing her best to take care of Lizelle 
but also she is incredibly mean to Azelle and Hans and everyone else. So, and then Hans, he's very patient and caring and like takes his time like coaxing Lizelle into um, being comfortable. And then um, the last chapter right before I went to bed is where it kind of talks about her relationship with Rudy and how they meet. And Rudy is this kid that lives on her street who has like five other siblings. And in high school, I remember that I loved Rudy's character. Um, he was just so interesting and he was so sweet and funny. The next chapter I'll read next time I get a chance to read will be the Jesse Owens incident where um, Rudy uh, kind of like impersonates this uh, black track athlete from the US that he loves and he really wants to be like because he's such a good runner. And so that will talk about that incident in specific. But yeah, um, I probably won't get to read again until late tonight. Um, I need to clean up a little bit and then I need to finish editing another video because I didn't finish it yesterday. Um, Rowan took a very poor nap yesterday. He kept waking up. Um, and he wouldn't stay asleep for more than like 20 minutes at a time so we just gave up on that and then today so far we've been on a walk or actually we made pancakes then we went on a walk and then we played outside then we cleaned up the house a little bit and now he's taking a nap but i need to finish cleaning i'm probably gonna wait for Ron to wake up to do floors because i need to vacuum i need to like just straighten things up and do that video but anyways, yeah, I will catch up with you guys next time I read. And I'll let you know how this is going. But so far, I'm still loving this reread. Like I said, I've loved this book for forever. And I really love loving the reread. Hey guys, we've had a super lazy day at home today. Um, Rowan woke up at three, he went back to sleep. I couldn't go back to sleep till about five, but then Rowan woke up again and he stayed up from five till seven. And then he went back to sleep till about 9.30. But we skipped our walk that we've been going on for the past couple of days today. And we've just had a super lazy day. But I just wanted to update you guys and let you know that I finished The Book Thief last night. I still love it so much. It's still one of my all-time favorite books. I don't even know why I'm so attached to this book, but it's just a book that I'm very much attached to and I very much still love. I ended up listening to the audiobook too. And that way, whenever I was walking or cleaning, I can listen to it. Especially because this is such a big book. I kind of forgot how big this book is because it's almost 550 pages. But yes, the audiobook was interesting because I'd never um, listened to it before. And it was nice hearing how some of the words, like the German words, were pronounced correctly instead of like my American English in my head uh, correcting it to what I'm used to, even though like I try to correct it to what I think it might be. And so that was interesting and I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed this book again. I still love the way it's told. Um, because it's, you know, it's Lizelle's story told from Death's perspective, especially about the parts where, like, they intersect. But also, um, Death telling the story she wrote down with his own, like, little notes from other events that have happened while, um, she was living her life and stuff. Like, he, at one point, you know, while Lizelle's living her life and having her own stuff go on, he talks about where Hans is at one point. And then also just you know how the story is going to end from the pretty much the beginning. I would say within the first 50 pages you know how it's going to end. But like it's written in such an engaging way that you kind of want to keep reading it. So I still love this book very very much. But yes I will be moving on to my next book but before I do I was going to finally tell you all the theme. I tried to find a better word for like the theme of this reading vlog but I kind of, kind of just am settling for a word that I think is good enough, but it's not the perfect word. So I would probably describe this reading vlog as supernatural because you know, there's the monster in A Monster Calls. Um, there's Death's perspective in The Book Thief. 
and then in the lovely bones which i will plan on starting in a few minutes whenever i finish uh, telling you guys what's up um she's dead and kind of i think helping to solve um her death i think that's what goes on i'm not completely sure it's not a very big book i plan on starting this in just a minute i think i'm just gonna lay in bed and read um until rowan wakes up from his nap and just enjoy my book i scooped the cat box i started a load of laundry and i took the dog out and fed the pets so now i'm just gonna lay in bed and read for a little bit while i wait on rowan to wake up so i know this story is about a girl a teenage girl who is murdered and um she kind of like i think she witnesses the after effects of her murder and she kind of helps solve it from death from being dead from the grave i'm sorry my sister's texting me um anyways though so like that's why i'm calling it supernatural i first thought spectral because i just liked the way the words sound but when i actually looked it up it seemed to like allude to it being more um sinister or spooky and while i think a monster calls probably verges more on being sinister or spooky even though i don't think it really was the book thief definitely does not fall into the category i think of being sinister or spooky because death is just a guy doing his job and telling you about this one specific story that he had a lot more involvement with than he normally would and then i don't know what to expect out of this one yet but i will update you guys at some point today or tomorrow after i read a little bit and you know get a better idea what's going on i'll talk to you guys later So I finished The Lovely Bones by Alice Sebald earlier this morning and I didn't like it that much. Um, I rated it three stars. I am I went into it expecting it to be kind of um, more action packed than it was. I didn't expect it to just be kind of following a Susie's family after her murder and like how they, how her family and like other people in her community move on and about how her killer more or less gets away with it. I don't know, I was expecting something different, which is my own fault. I probably should have done some more research into this book, but it kind of sucks because this is one of those books that I've wanted to read for years and years and years and just never got around to it when I finally did. I'm disappointed, so I really don't have a lot to say. I just, I'm disappointed. I wanted it to be, I guess I think I want it to be like more of a revenge story or um, like where Susie would play an active role in capturing the man but really it was just more of like i would say like more of a family drama with a ghost who kind of watches over her family and friends and like is also trying to i guess move on past the events i think that's how i would describe it like i said i was kind of disappointed but and i think that's my own fault for not doing more research um, like I said, my, my own fault, didn't do enough research on it, I just read a little bit about it. Also, like, the whole time, like, every time I read the first line, I always think of, like, um, the commercial for the movie back when it came out. No, it's not awful, it's probably, I could see why people would like it, it's really uniquely written, and it's very interestingly written. Um, it's just, on top of, like, not being what I expected and what I wanted it to be, um, I was so disappointed in some of the characters, like Susie's mom, I was so disappointed in her actions. Susie's dad, I was just kind of really sorry for him and then at a certain point it gets to like, but you have to learn how to move on at some point and just, yeah, I, mm, I'm upset, but oh well, it's fine. All right, so anyways guys, thank you for um, sticking along with my um, supernatural reading vlog. Um, a Monster Calls by Patrick Ness was a great five-star read and I loved it. I can't decide if I want to watch because apparently it's a movie now. I can't decide if I want to try to watch the movie or not. But I loved this one. This one was great. Um, I could see myself rereading this one in the future. 
The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak was a great reread and I will stick to my five star rating of this probably for forever at this point. Um, I really love this book so much. I love the way it's written. I love um, the way Death tells Lizelle's story and has his own little remarks in between and his own experiences. This is just a this is one of like I guess lifetime favorites. Um, I will probably reread this again at some point in the future because um, I've reread it enough times now, so why not keep doing it? And then The Lovely Bones by Alice Sebald. Um, three stars, and I was just disappointed. But um, yeah, so like all three of those books, like, I'm calling it a supernatural reading vlog because, um, you know. Susie's in heaven kind of going through um and watching over everyone essentially and her heaven's not like you know laying on clouds heaven it's like a personalized heaven um death is telling the story of a girl in um nazi germany and then a monster helps connor figure out um learn some universal truths and um, kind of discover his own personal truth. So yeah, overall it's a pretty good reading week. We're, uh, as of today, today is Friday, August 7th for me and um, I've already finished my first three books for the month. And now uh, whenever I hang up on y'all, I'm probably gonna go read um, Allegedly by Tiffany D. Jackson before I lose my library hold on it. Um, anyways though, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it, especially if you made it this far. Um, if you've read any of these three books that I mentioned in this vlog, please let me know what you think of them. Um, especially uh, The Lovely Bones. If you read this, like, um, whenever it was more popular, did your, were your thoughts different than mine are now? Or do you have the same thoughts? Or, or have you seen the movie? What do you think? But yeah, anyways, thank you so much and I will talk to you guys next week. Bye.